Are you seeing us, sir? Okay, we're uh, we're good. All right, guys, uh, we have uh, uh, Ellie Burstyn uh, here to talk to us today about uh, Hacker's Guide to uh, Side Channels. And uh, with that, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, you to have any sort of uh, first question or first answers, and we'll start taking questions on the Discord channel. So uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, any, uh, any sort of open remarks or anything? Uh, thank, thank you for watching, watching the talk. The talk. Uh, would I love to do it in person? I uh, kind of miss a left code ambience, but I hope we'll try to have a good chat, uh, ask anything you want, uh, try to do my best answer. And again, thank you so much for watching the talk. Yeah, great. So um, I guess I'll start off. We, uh, so I think you, um, you did a good job in the, uh, in the, in the talk talking about the, uh, the sort of why of machine learning and why uh, the model predicted what, it, or why the uh, machine learning uh, decided the way it decided, uh, if that makes sense, uh, and why the model mm -hmm. predicted what it predicted uh, in order to understand, you know, how a defender would react to that. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that 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 talk. I've never sort of, I never uh, thought of machine learning. You, know, you think of used to machine learning judging it on the what the outcome of it is, not, you know, not what led to that outcome uh, and what uh, and what defense to build from it. So. Um, I don't know if you want to comment on that that thought, or if it even makes sense yeah. what I just asked. No, it does. It does. It does. It does. Um, I think we uh, we have a lot of security tools for debugging, right? I think if you want to debug a C plus plus program, we have debugger. Uh, we have Python debugger, C plus plus debugger. Uh, most of the thing we can debug because they have, we have a way to introspect where the bug is triggered, right? The system, the entire stack is developed around error and handling. Uh, the problem with how the crypto is, you run a crypto algorithm on the hardware and you have no idea why information is leaking, right? You have a leak, you know that the machine learning observationally is finding the correct key or the correct attack point. And you're like, okay, I developed this current implementation, and we do have to go have our own uh, cryptographic chip, right? So that's the thing we're very concerned about. And everyone who do crypto chip is interested in that question of, okay, you have a lead, but then what? And prior to machine learning, we didn't have a technique, or we didn't have a tool where you can ask, why? Why do you predict what you do? I tried to, this is kind of like a crazy thing about the machine learning thing. It do things which, we can't do otherwise. It's not ideal because, you know, we all say, well, machine learning is a black box. That's completely true. But that's the only thing we have, which is like, okay, can you please tell me why? The why is a little bit iffy, uh, but it's like, why? And then we thought, okay, since we moved from such an attack using, you know, statistical estimate to machine learning, and we talked about last year at DEF CON, it works really well. Can we go one step further and try to also ask the model why? And then you can do that. And as I said, it's, it's very, very brittle. Uh, you have to be super, super precise, and we make it work for one implementation. And you know, it's a tool, so obviously we're going to choose the best case. Truth of the matter is, you know, you have to really be super precise, which is like CPU instruction precise. So it's not super robust just yet, but you can do that. And I think that's the only tool in the world who can do that. That's why Scaled is one of its kind. It's the first generation of it. Uh, you know, five years and years from now we'll be laughing at it and we're like, okay, there was a better way to do it, I'm pretty sure. But it was a um, two crazy years of brainstorming and trying ideas until we come up with an idea of doing it. It's, it come out of necessity, it come out from our product team inside Google of like, okay guys, you, you make better attacks, which was not the goal, but the goal of our whole project is to make a better world, like the more secure world. Crypto is important for all of us, and I don't have to preach a choir. And then we were really wanted to have like a tool for the engineering team of like, and around the world of like, okay, here's a tool you can use in your tool lab. Here's the debugger for hardware crypto. And it just doesn't exist, so that's the first of the So that's where it comes from. And without measuring, it doesn't work, but without the it doesn't work, and without the community, it doesn't work. We use a lot of source technology behind the scene, like Unicorn. And we had previous talk today about Unicorn as well. A lot of people are using Unicorn, which is a CPU emulator, which is very useful community. So we are standing on shoulder of giant, 
we're just bringing some of the interesting tools to it. That's really that's, that's, that's what it is. Great. So um, actually, just jumping off what you said, the um, are people actually using you know this to uh, to help uh, identify side channels yet, or have you been approached no, by anyone? No, not yet. So that's exactly the absolute uh, <laughs> To be clear, uh, we had a lot of debate actually internally because the tool is super out of the press. Uh, I would say the initial like complete success was probably one or two weeks old. Uh, we knew it was somewhat working, but we didn't get it to, to work as clearly as it should to talk like until maybe 24 hours before I recorded the talk to be clear. And this is literally, but we saw that that's quite in uh, We really want to contribute. We really want to be part of the community. Uh, usually we're not really good at, I don't think things ahead of what we do, but this year we saw that we wanted to really show you the cutting edge of what we were working on as a way to 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 participate and to be like part of the community. So no, it's not there yet. Uh, the research paper is not there yet. Uh, I'm sure the current question is going to come up, so I'll answer. Yes, the call will be public next week. Uh, I'm still cleaning up the GitHub to tell you how how new it is. Uh, but we went for, here's something new exciting that we work on. Uh, you guys might get a kick out of looking at it and be inspired, and that's what we go for. So the talk, sometimes I'm bumping the middle of it. Uh, sorry about that too. Uh, I tried to record the door closed when, when California is like 28 degrees. The, the room when I tried to record, so I was training a little bit. I apologize also for my English. Uh, but yeah, we really try to do like this is the take mode talk, which is like we do show you bleeding edge, like it's a true, you know, very old death con spirit of like this is new, we're here to share information. So that's what it was. So no, it's not yours. Absolutely not. But it will, it will. I'm, I'm confident it will. It will, it will, it will <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, so uh, the, the example we we're using were mostly around power, if I uh, understood the the, uh, the the presentation right. And uh, you know, you mentioned other uh, side channels, you know, heat uh, emissions, um, uh, timing, etc. I mean, do you see you see these techniques would apply to all those, or or was there there wasn't anything unique to the the instrumentation you used, right? No, I don't think there's nothing anything special to it. I, I never use. I said I, I don't know if anyone ever used heat. I would be super curious if someone knows about a heat attack, timing attack. It would be super, super interesting. I've never seen one. Uh, like in crypto, they might exist. I don't know. To be clear, but I, we we thought about the yeah, electro magnetic. I think is one of the big deal. Uh, we wanted to do it this year, to be clear, and extend our, what we do from power to EM as well. Uh, the truth of the matter is we cannot go to the office, right? We're doing remote work in our team, as many of us are doing in the community, and uh, we don't have access to our equipment, right? So the only thing we can really do is power, because that's what is plugged in into our lab, and the only thing we can access remotely to do uh, electro EM, you have to literally have an EM table, and you have to be on top of the chip, and that is not doable in the near future. So we love to do EM, uh, it's just not going to happen today. I think the next big target is that uh, you would do uh, maybe timing. Timing might work too, probably. I think there is a few papers coming out this year uh, from other group on uh, machine learning and timing attacks for uh, electric um, parasite, I believe. Parasite and maybe electric curve. So I think it's doable. They show that you can use machine learning for that. So as I said, machine learning is is there a way going to, to take over uh, side channel attacks for hardware in the next two, three years? And when it's going to do it, uh, we just happen to be in the first few groups who are doing it. Uh, there are also in France, uh, ANSI, I think the, there's a German group as well who's doing some of it. Uh, some uh, vendors are taking some of the research and putting it into products. So I think that's where it's going to go. Uh, but I think most of people are on the power train for now. Uh, maybe a little bit of timing attack as uh, training this year. I guess the is the next. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was I was wondering that too. It's kind of as you're saying, you you know, you built your model, I guess, using mostly an emulator. And so, I, like, it's how well how well does that scale then to hardware, right? Other hardware, like, is it's kind of the research you've done? It's, it's that one sample, or do you think that you know you need to build your machine learning models for different types of processors or setups, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So for the attack, for the attack side, uh, we know it works. Uh, I mean, that's. <laughs> I hope it's not a unique on paper, but we, we since last year we've been working. Since last three years, we have 
collected a massive set of data set that we, we really hope to publish. I'm not going to give the data at that point. Let's see, I said very soon, and it didn't happen this year, uh, or the next year we have, but uh, yes, we have that for multiple data sets and for hardware that works. For the emulation side, uh, you know, the other side, which is not the machine side, the dynamic analysis where we need to be cycle precise, uh, we don't even have an ARM one. And the thing is, Intel is, for example, out of question because they have a predictive pipeline, so we don't even know, like, depending on how the Intel predictive pipeline will work or the flush pipeline will work, the number of instructions is completely non deterministic or at least to a point where in our poor brain we're not able to do it just yet. So if your CPU is too complicated, I don't think we can. Uh, reduced set instructions should work, I, I guess, but as I said, we don't even have the device now because you know, it's like, oh, it's between, I don't know what the range is, it's crazy, like 2 to 12 cycles. So we have to kind of you know, make it an estimated guess. So it works for ARM, mostly embedded stuff, I assume smaller power, small power would work too. Uh, but yes, the emulation side of it is, is hard because if you're off, you know, even the machine learning is correct, you find the attack. Then, if you are for the cycle for the simulation, you end up, I don't know, like 6, 12, 15, 100 cycle uh, left or right, and then you, you are on the wrong line of code, right? The line of code, as I said, is two, four instructions, so you might have, you know, you might get lucky if you're a little bit early, but that the margin becomes terrifyingly hard. And similarly, there is a back point chart at the end of the. <laughs> Uh, you can also attack the end of the implementation, not the first round, but the end. And then, again, then at that point, every error is compounded, right? So the further you are in the trace, on the right side, if you take it that way, the more you're going to have a chance of messing it up. So yes, we choose the easy case, which is like very well-defined arm, it's a very small set of instructions, well-defined, well-documented, uh, on an easy C non-vectorized, because that's the easy case. Uh, Harder case would be like more feature of engineering. I think the people in the committee are interested to, to help us improve the analyzer or add more targets. It's probably doable. It's just going to be interesting. Uh, reverse engineering the size, right? And that's for people who like hardware. It, it's fun to do. It's just that's going to require work. To be clear. Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. Yeah, so uh, I mean, the attacks themselves are pretty hard. So uh, it goes to show that the uh, the defensive analysis would be just as hard, right? So. Uh, yeah, I mean, we know that time, we know that hardware, I mean, we know that side channel attacks are inevitable, right, almost inevitable. There are defenses which might exist, like doubling the bus for power side supply, uh, power attack, but that's not going to be implemented in hardware, it's too expensive or too costly. Or to be, uh, so you, everything is going to to such an attack to an extent. Uh, the question is, how hard can we make it? Right? There are a really cool set of uh, work done uh, mostly by French, uh, the French uh, ANSI on uh, mass KS, which is kind of like the way you make it harder. You can also make it more, uh, slower. Uh, so the question is, how, can, how slow can the hardware uh, encryption, right? The question is, how, how many milliseconds can you tolerate? Uh, the reason why I mention that is, uh, if you use security keys, right, we, we create security keys, uh, they use NFC. And the problem with NFC, NFC needs to be super fast and super low power. So now in those settings, making a super resilient implementation is going to be challenging. Uh, that being said, be clear, uh, this is very secure, this is not AES as we show, but even for that, you can actually say, if you want a AES also, if you have a session attack, and then you can say, well, I don't have a lot of time, I don't have a lot of power, and then more computation to harden my thing, that become kind of impossible. So there will always be a trade-off, right? And as long as there is a trade-off, there is a vulnerability. So, you know, Tyler's channel attack, as we said, is probably the most powerful attack you can do against crypto these days because this is the one where we know you're not going to solve it. So, interesting. As long as it's interesting space, uh, unsolvable, but no. Pretty interesting. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll say I really appreciated your talk too, how you went through the different steps. Like it was very informative and instructive. Like, like even just mentioning explainers. Like you did a very good job of explaining everything and really showing the real world examples. 
Um, you say though, like you say, side channel attacks are really important for encryption. Like, how, I guess, how did you get into the side channel attack space? Like, what drew you to that? Was it the encryption aspect to try to defeat that, or was like, how did your research end up on side channel attacks? Oh, wow. Well. Uh, that's, that's a hard question. question. <laughs> uh, I, think I think it was two things. Um, I, I think what, what happened, happened is, uh, before, before, I always did crypto analysis, and then uh, people, people might or might not be remember it, but uh, a few years back, uh, we are not the first creation on SHA-1, and we did it all uh, at that, uh, Black Cat at that time. And uh, it took us a while. It took us a while to do it. Uh, breaking SHA-1 in collaboration with Mark Steven, the CWI took two years. Uh, most people don't realize that sometime when we do talk, it's like, oh, that's very, that's what's nice. It took three years of effort for us, and I think Mark spent almost 10 years on it. So you get out of breaking SHA-1. I mean, putting in practice is what broken by, uh, by one, but like providing the first collision, and then, as I said, in 2015, uh, we do the first collision and we show these two PDFs which have like the same shower and then the world deprecate shower which was go our goal. Uh, interestingly enough, as a backstory, the reason why we decided to do it is not to do a talk, but because we really want to help people realize they need to move away from it. At the time, Microsoft Explorer did not deprecate it and Firefox was kind of like uh, lagging. And it had the immediate effect that both of them immediately deprecated it. So, you know, it was like, why would you ever go into this crazy uh, amount of money and amount of energy to literally compute all this? And the answer was uh, because at that time we wanted to show the world it was doable, it was not theoretical, and we should treat it seriously. Again, it was like important to get this always in the context of. Uh, we, our team, the research team, at Google is really, we try to do the lab next door where people come out with a project and we try to figure out if you can have the work. And then we finish that and we're like, okay, uh, what else? You know, and then so yeah, so searching is almost a hangover uh, because for two years you can focus on one thing and then what's, what's next? A piece of crypto. And then we're like, okay, what's going to do? And then we start to talk with the product team and at that time, uh, something called the Titan chip uh, publicly is developed by Google. So Google owns crypto chip. And the crypto chip, we talked to the hardware engineer and they told us, well, no. So this crazy idea, uh, we come up with one paper from uh, the French agency, uh, which is the French uh, control agency specialized in crypto. Uh, they have this very, very interesting work on machine learning and crypto. You should check it out. Uh, and I want you to fall in love with the idea. Uh, the internal team was very interested into having internal resources to start to do expertise. And then we realized it's very, very powerful, very interesting. It's play well into what we're going to do, uh, which is machine learning at the time, and here. Uh, it plays well into core and fundamental research that we should do. Uh, it plays well with, so we decided to go for it. Uh, honestly, we got from our product team the right to do it as completely serendipitous and as many in research more like, uh, you know, talking to people, and that's why something like that is really cool. You watch a talk, you get inspired by other people, you build on other people, it works for ideas, and we all keep it to push it further. So I think that's what it was. I think that's what this idea of uh, come from other people, don't take credit for it at all. Uh, we make a lot of wonderful people from Ledger, from, uh, from Steve Whisper, Whisper, you know, Colin, and I know Steve Whisper is always discussed for the other community, the situation with the other community, he gives us a lot of time to help us give, give us pointer in early days, and so that's what he wants. Um, so we're glad that now we contribute back. Great, so we have a question from the audience. Uh, apart from approving the uh, emulation, what do you see as the next step in this field of slide, side channel detection? Detection. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think there are. Uh, I think it goes hand to hand with uh, better attack. Uh, again, we can only explain what we can attack. Uh, I think we have 
a few working streams on public key and a few working stream on other algorithm. I think that would be interesting to do. Uh, we're always looking for people who are willing to work with us uh, because it's a very, very big, it's very, very, I won't say difficult, but it's a lot of grind, you know, to create, create the data and to do the machine learning and that sort of things. And so if people are interested to collaborate with, we're always up for it because it's a little bit like figure out what to do is hard. Last year, we're like, oh my God, it's so hard to do the IAF model. <laughs> this year, after a year of refining the machine learning model in our process, we can basically do it in 10 minutes. So we went for five hours to 15 minutes uh, by getting just mechanically better at it. Uh, I think it's going to be the same for the other algorithm. So I really view, view that. I think uh, we're also going to view, I hope, people being creative for it. Uh, I don't know. I. I would imagine you can do that timing attack. Some people mentioned cache line as an idea. I found that quite interesting. Uh, there is a holy grail of Intel uh, HGX, right? I mean, Enclave is also using crypto. It is crazy hard to attack uh, because it's literally baked into the Intel CPU, right? However, uh, no one knows if machine learning can do it or not. Uh, some people we talk to say, yes, it's probably doable. I don't. I never do it. I. We don't have necessarily the time to do it by ourselves. We're happy to, to contribute, but that's something which is interesting line of research. I think Enclave is a big deal. Um, other algorithms are a big deal, uh, but also you, we can think of crazy things. Everything which is coming sounds a bit bad. I would not be surprised if someone even come up with a crazy idea on how to do it for uh, Bitcoin wallet transactions, or you know, or even uh, what would be another trust that SQL injection. You know, we have a lot of blind SQL injection. Uh, maybe we cannot, we can get more out of the timing. We can make more out of the timing that we think we can. Uh, it's unclear. I mean, most of them should have been fixed, but yeah, I don't know. That's love room, love creativity. Uh, it depends on people's taste. I'm sure. Great. Um, so you mentioned a paper's coming out. Uh, do, you have, do you have an estimate on when, when you're going to be done with that? <laughs> I'm not going to jinx it, man. I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Last year I said it's going to be soon. <laughs> the draft is still on my desk. And for the schedule paper, I'm going to be completely honest. Is I told you we rushed to do it for DEFCON. We really wanted to show you Building Edge. Uh, literally, the paper is not written. The next step for us is really to show, to put everything on GitHub. Uh, I'll, post, I'll post the link on Twitter, uh, hopefully it next week. Uh, nothing on wood. Uh, and then we, we're going to want people to play with it. We rather provide any complete stuff to people to play, uh, because last year we did the reverse, which so we're going to hold, 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 and give everything at once, and it didn't work out. So this year, uh, switching the strategy, uh, going to release early, uh, imperfect but early, and then the paper will come later. Come tell you what, but yet the AS data sets we promised last year are still there, we just haven't get a chance to, to release them. And then the scheduled school paper, you'll be able to play with the code, Run the code I showed you, get the volume I showed you, and then um, that would be incomplete because you'd be like, oh, where are the other attack points? Uh, not there yet. Uh, where are the other model? Not there yet. They're going to get there where they can, and I make no promises <laughs> because I can't. I don't know what I can keep or not. So try to be a little bit more <laughs> realistic this year than last year. I don't want to see it to disappoint people. I was going to ask the same thing, so it's definitely on folks' minds. Uh, we do have a question from the chat. Um, so, you know, are you aware of any side channel attacks that are found in the wild, um, right, where attackers are using them, or is this more of where we're thinking about how to defend against these attacks before, you know, we see them active? Oh, side channel, <coughs> side channel are everywhere. Side channel are everywhere. They're like the most prevalent form of attack for hardware. Uh, let me try to figure out which one I can tell you which are pretty interesting. So again, it's not singular. To, to put one company like this company is bad because I'm telling you there is a ton of them. So I'll start with one of my favorite uh, companies, uh, which I really like, uh, Ledger. Uh, two years ago, they had a way, someone from a timing attack on the LT curve, that's what the example I gave at the beginning of the talk, and they were able to recover out the, out the Ledger uh, Trezor uh, the Bitcoin private key. Right? So that's pretty pretty big deal. Uh, there was timing attack on many game console. Uh, I think we're, we're streaming on Twitch, I'm not going to give too much detail, but uh, 
Uh, so many, many uh, security, many, many uh, game consoles are protected uh, by crypto. And there was some attack to recover some of those secret keys. Uh, that was earlier, earlier generation, like I'm not talking <coughs> PlayStation uh, 5 or 4 or Xbox, uh, uh, Xbox One. I'm talking previous generation, but there was some attack who were used to recover uh, crypto keys. Uh, there was many of them. There was an AS one uh, a very long time ago, uh, used by uh, I believe it was Dan Bernstein on uh, remote AS. Uh, there was one on cache line attacks on CPUs. Uh, there were there are so many of them everywhere. Uh, Such an attack are are so powerful. Uh, the most powerful form of uh, SQL injection is blind SQL injection. Where you uh, sorry, such an attack. Blind SQL injection is when you have a SQL injection, but you can't see the the output. Then you trigger, uh, you do it uh, one at, one character at a time, and you just look at whether the server responds or not. That's a form of such an attack. They are everywhere. It's not. It's a super super practical attack, and usually people are really annoyed and say it's not a real attack because it's a known technique. It's not a known technique. It's a known technique. It just happened that it works super super efficiently on many many things. Uh, yep, that is, uh, yeah, you have it on, uh, of, obviously also like physical stuff like, uh, electronic locks, uh, and things like that, uh, yep. uh, oh, I forgot, uh, when, when I say I need to absolutely, I, I forgot, I, I forgot the most important one, I'm sorry, oh. I'm so sorry, uh, Spectre and Meldon, right, Spectre, Meldon, there you mm -hmm. go. The thing which completely destroy all CPU, they are a form of such an attack. So here you go. The most, as I said, the, some of the most powerful attack, concrete attack we see in the last few years are such an attack because they are so hard to defend. I say so hard to, to pull off to defend against. That's yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think I read something about those. Um, they, they were they were kind of big, right? Yeah, I I I I, I ping in the chat the I can ping in the chat the article. There's a wired article who can like outline that. It would be good to to just read up if you guys are interested. Uh, I think it's QA. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So we got uh, a couple minutes left. If we have any more uh, questions, uh, let's get them in here. Uh, otherwise, we're going to uh, uh, thank um, uh, Ellie and. Uh, uh, let you guys get back to the con. So, yeah, one one last one for me. Um, so, folks. Oh, wait. We actually do have one more. Uh, um, yeah. So, someone who is mainly focused in infosec. Um, you know, what kind of background do you think people, you know, kind of lend themselves to going towards looking at side channel attacks and thinking about like kind of the research you're doing with with all of the, you know, being able to detect that in different ways. What kind of background? Um, it varies. <coughs> it varies. It varies. Um, we have some people who come from uh, radio. You know, like the first initial, for those who don't know, the first initial site and attack was actually uh, in the 1940s or something like that, where they had a typewriter and the guy was having an oscilloscope and then he saw blip on the oscilloscope and realized that there was something. And then the Russian put a uh, I use that to spy onto uh, onto people, you know, by looking at uh, vibration. So that's super old stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the radio guys. The radio guys know a lot about all these electromagnetic things and you know spy spy crafts there. So a lot of spy crafts come from that. Uh, we have people who do such an attack who come from hardware, hardware people, you know, who like to build CPU and uh, look into meltdown mel specters, cache lines. So those guys also do such an attack in a different way. Uh, we have cryptographers, uh, you know, people who have more like a formal crypto background like me, who, who are more into that. So it really depends on your use case. And you have people who do web security with like yeah, for them timing attack and such an attack means more uh, SQL injection. So I think everyone kind of like touch it by the band. Uh, and it's fairly easy to get into it. I think there is this kind of like apprehension sometimes. I, when the first time I read the paper about it, I, I probably didn't get the best paper to read as an intro. It felt like very bizarre to me, and I didn't really understand what they were going for. And I was like a little bit like, it took me like, I don't know, like three to four months to kind of like get used to it, how it's the mindset of it. I think it's a very powerful mindset. I think it's a very fun experience to do. Uh, if you are interested in child channel attack, 
uh, specifically on hardware, and you want to start without machine learning, you know, like more simple stuff like SSC code, cheap whisper, uh, which is a thing that uh, is like very affordable, and even you don't need the whole thing, you can just run out of existing traces, has super cool tutorial. Uh, I think Colin from Cheap Whisper has put a tremendous amount of Jupyter uh, Python code. You can get to it, you can play with it, understand how it works, and you're going to break, recover an AS key. And then you'll be super happy. You know, you, you have this super intense satisfaction that you got it to work, not necessarily understand everything, but it's going to start to make sense. So I said it's for everyone who is interested in kind of like pen testing one way or another and or have fun. And you know, like you want to break into a uh, a lock, maybe there's a timing attack. Uh, there was a superstition that some of the uh, you know like super high secret security locks, you know the cabin, uh, one where you have rotation and things might have timing attack. Uh, there are there is maybe there uh, there are in I said almost all aspects. So yeah, for me it's for everyone. Uh, I said. I just I love that you went to radio first, and then like math and crypt came later. So that's 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 good, right? Yeah, just... it's it's not it's not a deep mathematical background, right? To be clear, it's like it's literally observing a signal and say if I do A, signal look look like this. If I do B, signal look like this. And if I can see differences, then I can construct something. And of course, you can do more and more complicated stuff to do more hypotheses, and then that become complicated at some point, but. So the basic stuff is really like, I look at something, it's a very experimental, very hacking thing. It's for doer. That's really what I would say, it's for doer. For people who like to tinker with stuff. So basically, if you're here, you're on the chat, you are the right person. That, let's put that way. If you are a deaf code person, you are the right audience for the session attack because it's all about doing. And then Matt is here to help you and maybe to push it further, but that's not the core of it. The core of it is, matter things like right? the world is made of stuff which do not behave the way people want and have this kind of secret hidden property you like to uncover that's what such an attack is <laughs> I, I hope i said it and i get you excited to try it i hope so no yeah. yeah, great uh well so we're at the top of the hour and uh um we appreciate the uh the generosity with your time and answering these questions and uh um pretty excited to uh to look at the uh the follow-on work coming out of this and uh, thank yeah. you for everything you've done, and uh, we'll uh, see you next year, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Uh, next year, I hope actually next year to the year, this year uh, talk. Uh, so I'm not going to say to you what is a surprise, but uh, and I said I, I post on Twitter when the guitar is up. Uh, so I'm at Eli at Twitter on Twitter, and then if you want to to follow it up, uh, the slide are online as well. As I said in the slide in the, in the talk, I post it on the chat. If uh, yeah, I can no. post it in right? I'm not going to get mad. Okay. No, no, <laughs> I, 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 you can, I, and I, I just that. did. So good. Okay, perfect. So Great. it's there, and then I promise I post the code as early as I can so you get content. Of it. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching the talk. Uh, hopefully next year we are all in person. And uh, as usual, uh, I'm always happy to answer any questions. Just hit me with a DM or on Discord, whatever you guys want, and I try to my best to answer questions. Thank you so much, guy. I hope you have a nice DEF CON, and if there's a lot of other cool talk to, to watch, I'm super excited personally to, to watch a few more. So, right. thank you so much.